Now is this external prodigy sound card no good? Or should we start to dance? Let's find out in this video. Now I would like to present to you the AudioTrack Prodigy Cube Black Edition, an external sound card by, well, AudioTrack. It was released back in 2014, making it six years old. And it is being sold for about 100 euros. At least that's the price that I paid. I have seen some deals on Black Friday that it was sold for about 80 to 90 euros. So if you want to wait another year to get this sound card, you definitely should because you can get 20% discount. The card itself, I have done some other Prodigy sound card reviews, namely the, I have the box here, the ESI Prodigy X5 NRG, I've had upside down, sorry about that. The ESI Prodigy X5 NRG, which is, well, an ESI sound card, so where's the connection between those who have Prodigy? Well, it is in the name. Um, both cards have audio track on them, and the reason behind that is that audio track is a trademark by the gyro com company which is based in incheon in korea and they licensed esi which is a germany based company to create sound cards also what's very interesting to see is that it's a bit of a known thing but whatever both boxes have the exact same dimensions i think they have a complete warehouse full of boxes and they decided, well, we still have one, some of those left. Why not create a different, well, print on them and sell them anyway? It doesn't really matter. But it's interesting to see that those boxes are identical in dimensions. First off, let's head over to the specifications. The AudioTrack Prodigy Cube Black Edition is a USB-powered external sound card. It has a microphone in, something that not all external sound cards have. Especially this function is a pro for gamers out there in my humble opinion. There is a huge issue though, because of some bandwidth limitations of USB. Now if you want to use both the microphone in and the headphone out, you have to set the microphone to 16 bits and 44,1 kilohertz. Now this isn't a major issue, it's not like I'm gaming with my mates for them to hear my velvety voice, but still, it's a bit of a stain and I would have been nice if they just fixed it out of the factory. It supports headsets from 16 to 150 ohms, which is standard for a non-external powered USB sound card. There is a big button in the front so you can switch between your headset and maybe your speakers if you have them powered. But when powering your speakers, I did notice that it doesn't have much power to drive them. So make sure you have active speakers and not passive. There is a volume dial on there that works independently from the Windows volume. On the back you have two line outs for say active speakers. You have a USB input and an optical or a coax SP diff digital output. The reported dynamic range is 108 decibels, which is okay. Component-wise, well, there is some exciting things going on. For instance, it has a component which is called the USB audio streaming controller, and it's made by the Galaxy Far East Movement, uh, Far East Corporation. The component's name is the Tenor 7222L, and it's a USB 2.0 full-speed high-quality streaming controller. It supports 16 and 24 bits with sampling rates from 8, 16, 32, 44,1 and 96 kilohertz. The digital to analog converter used is the Wolfson WM8776. This is also used in the ESI Prodigy 7.1 Hi-Fi. The swappable op amp used is the LME 49720. Okay, so I hooked up with the external sound card to my test system for the listening sessions just to see, well, what does this sound card sound like? And well, the first thing that, well, popped out was that it is a really bassy sound card. So much so that I, well, changed headset because I thought, well, maybe it's the headset. I started to listen with my Sennheiser headset, which is sort of the standard first off default 
sound of headset that I'm using. Uh, but it was so basic that I thought, well, maybe I need a headset that's a little bit less bassy, like the Teufel headset that I have. And th those two mixed very well together. The Teufel is a bit underpowered in the bass section. The audio track is a bit overpowered and then, well, they cancel each other out. So the music was a lot better. How about those middle sections? Well, uh, it was nice to hear. It was nothing exciting going on. It was just middle sounds, middle frequencies. And the, well, the highs were a bit better. They were a bit more crispy, but still, well, it wasn't that exciting. It was just being there. It was still sometimes being overpowered by bass. So you have a lot of pumping bass and not so much middle and higher frequencies. After those listening sessions, I was really curious about Reitmark Audio Analyzer. What would those results say? I'd imagine there's a huge bump or spike in the lower sections, but to my amazement, there was none. In fact, the line is rather nice. It was really flat. You could see a difference in the volume between the white line and the right line, which means that the volume on the left speaker is ever so slightly louder than the right speaker. But this is something I didn't hear in the listening sessions. Overall score, it gets a good. The frequency response and the total harmonic distortions are both very good. There is some noise and some stereo crosstalk going on, but still nothing to be ashamed about for an external sound card. So, what about the conclusion? Well, the sound card itself, as I said before, is very bassy and it started to annoy me after some time, even when I used the Teufel headset, which is a bit underpowered in the bass section. That was one of the downsides of this sound card. So if you're into bass or you have a really underpowered headset that's in, underpowered in the bass section, this is an interesting option for you. What I did like about this headset is, of course, it has a microphone in, which is did have some issues, as I said before. But it's not that all external sound cards these days have a headset in. So if you're a gamer, this is a nice thing to have. Also, the fact that you can have two different headsets outputs, uh, one 6,35 millimeters, one 3.5 millimeters, I think those were nice additions to have. But would I recommend it for 90 to 100 euros? Well, no, sadly I will not. If you want to have an external sound card with a really good sound and have not so much bass and is also has a microphone in, you can always go to the Sennheiser GSX 300, the EPOS sound card, which is a really good sound card for a really nice price. And well, this one just sadly isn't. I'm sorry to say so, because, well, I did want to like this sound card. In fact, I wanted to love this sound card because I fell in love with those ESI sound cards in the past. But I didn't fall in love with this one, I'm sad to say. So I'm sending it back to Amazon. Sorry, Amazon, I'd like my money back. That's it for me for today. Um, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye.